I present to you the Oceanographic in Valencia, in Spain. And this is the PS5. You put them together and you get this masterpiece. Hello there! If you're new here, I'm Miriam and this is my game in perspective. Well, yesterday it was the PS5 reveal and I hope most of you were there to see it because my god what an amazing presentation. Yesterday's presentation, because I'm filming this on Friday, even though this is not going to go up until Monday, so... But yeah, yesterday's presentation was Le Crème de la Crème. Mind you, I don't speak French, so I don't really know if I said that with a good pronunciation or not, but... Okay, so let's just go over what was announced in the presentation, because there's too much too much i couldn't keep up with the presentation i was like wait game 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 like can we can we can we pause for a minute here i'm trying to catch my breath oh my goodness so many things to talk about okay so the presentation started a little bit on the meh side for me because they started with Grand Theft Auto 5 and I thought that was going to lead into Grand Theft Auto 6 but, but no, it was clearly not the case but it's true that Grand Theft Auto 5 is going to come to the PS5 so I guess that's, that's good, right? For those of you who are fans of the Grand Theft Auto series you will be happy to know that though I am sure you would have been happier if a Grand Theft Auto 6 had been announced. But I guess we'll have to wait for that one. Now, can we get a huge round of applause for Miles Morales? Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy, was I excited when I saw that. I haven't played the game and I haven't I didn't really know who Miles Morales was, but I saw that I was like Wow! Yes, please, come to me right now and thank you. This one is supposed to release during the holiday season and it appears to include more science fiction aspects to the game. I don't know if it's going, I mean, it's probably going to be a spin-off. I hope it's not going to be the same game as the Spider-Man one with the same story, I hope not. The next game that was shown was Gran Turismo 7. And I'm not a, I'm not really into car games, but it looked good. I'm sure those of you who are fans of the Gran Turismo series are really excited for this one. Next we got Ratchet and Clank and my god that looked incredible! I think that's the moment when it clicked that I was looking at the PS5 and not at the PS4 because you were able to jump between dimensions without having to have a loading screen. That might not be something huge for a lot of people, but when I saw that I was like, wow, goodbye loading screens, goodbye and good riddance. <sighs> then we were shown the logo from Square Enix and I almost lost my shit. What we got, I think, looks really interesting and, and I'm going to play it. I'm, I'm going to play it for sure. It's called Project Athia and it, it looks amazing. It truly looks amazing. I don't know how many times I'm going to say amazing in this video, but it truly looks amazing. It's going to be a fantasy action game. And of course, since it's still a work in progress, we don't really know anything about the story, but so far, what I saw from the trailer looked incredible. So yeah, they, they uh, I'm going to buy it. When? Um, that's the question. The next one, they capture my attention with a cut. 
when I saw the cut on the screen, I was like, oh, 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 okay, 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 yes, 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 I'm in, just tell me what this game is about. And apparently, eh, you are supposed to play as the cut, and there are some mysteries you're going to have to solve in order to escape this kind of cyber city and to return home. <coughs> Next, we had Returnal, which gave me a little bit of anxiety. Like, you fight, then you die again. You wake up, and then you have to repeat the same cycle, and then you die again. Ooh, no. Oh my god. It looked really cool, looked really interesting. Don't know if it's my kind of game at all but it looks like it's going to be a science fiction kind of adventure with some horror aspects thrown in there and i'm not really a huge fan of horror games then we were shown a really cute platformer the first few games of sackboy were 2d platformers but now in this one, as you can see on your screens, it's going to be 3D, which is a plus always. It, it also reminds me of Mario Odyssey, but... Next one was Destruction All-Stars. And yeah, that's not really my thing, but I'm sure most of you, or the ones who enjoy Fortnite and all of those kinds of games, will enjoy it. Now, Kenna Bridge of Spirits is for sure a game I'm going to play. It looked gorgeous. And for those of you who know me, you will know that I love Japan, its culture, its language, and everything that has to do with Japan. And this game gives me so many Japanese vibes that at, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, yes. Yes, give me more, give me more, please. And the cute little creatures, like, do you see them? Do you see their eyes and their, <gasps> so cute, they're so cute. And I saw them, I was like, oh, see? No, Siri, I don't want anything to do with you, thank you. My goodness, it's listening to everything I say. <laughs> It looks like it's going to be a really cute adventure full of fantasy, magic, and really a lot of good things just smashed together. Um, the next one I didn't really understand. The next one was Goodbye Volcano High. Uh, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, what is this? It the, the animations look nice, but but I, I, I don't really know what kind of game it is. The next game that was shown was Old World Soulstorm. And I haven't played the other Old World games. I don't really know what Old World is about. If any of you know what Old World is about and would like to explain it to me, the one who knows nothing about Old World, then leave a comment down below explaining it to me because I'm sorry, I. I don't know what old world is. And thank you. If you do explain it to me, thank you. The next two games that were shown were Godfall and Solar Ash. Godfall is an action role-playing game which is being developed by Counterplay Games and it's probably going to come in late 2020. Regarding Solar Ash, it's the second game actually from Hard Machine, the ones who created Hyper Light Drifter. Though this one looks really different and really improved, I guess, but it looks really interesting. And according to this, Solar Ash is a kingdom, because that's actually the name of the game, Solar Ash Kingdom. And I guess we'll have to wait a little bit more to know what the game is really about. But so far, it looks really good. Next, we had Hitman 3. It seems like Agent 47 is making a return and it will be out next January. Then we got Astro's Playroom and Little Devil Inside. 
An Astro's Playroom. I don't think it's going to be virtual reality, but it looks like a really cute platformer. And it's still in development, so we don't really know when it's really coming. And Little Devil Inside. This one was really interesting. The art style looked amazing. I don't know what kind of story it's going to be, but it looked really amazing. And I don't know why it reminded me of the Tim Burton movies. It looks really cool. It looks really cute. And that one, I'm, I'm really interesting on, on watching more of it. And I'm playing it probably, yeah. We also got Ghostwire Tokyo and Jet the Far Shore. Ghostwire Tokyo is made by Bethesda and Tango Gameworks and it was also first shown at E3 in 2019 and right now we at long last got a little bit of gameplay. It's coming on 2021. Jet the Far Shore, I don't really know what to say about it because I don't really understand what the game is going to be about. Supposedly, and according to this, it's going to be an interstellar trip to carve out a future for a people haunted by oblivion. I mean, looking at the trailer, I didn't really understand what this was going to be about. I saw the trailer and I was like, well, okay, okay, okay. Then we got NBA 2K21. I'm sure a lot of you guys are happy about this one, but I probably won't play it. But I'm glad you guys are able to play it. Then we got Back Snacks, which is made by the same team who did Octodad, which was a really fun game, but and, and this one it seems to be really creative. It looks as if when you eat food, which are bugs, then you become the food that you've eaten. And it looks like the more bug food you eat, you become evil. It's so strange. Strange. Yeah. It's going to come on the holiday season, by the way. Then we have Demon Souls, which is getting a remake. But it looks like instead of being a really full remake, it's more of a, an increase in resolution. Then we have Deathloop, which again, why do they like to make us die and die and die and die again and then come alive again? Like first the other science fiction game and now Deathloop when you're basically on a circle, on a in a cycle where you are alive, then you die, then you're alive, then you die, then you're alive, then you die. Like, is this going to be a new trend? The game look, looked interesting. It was also shown at E3 2019. And this is about assassins which are engaged in an ongoing duel for ages because this is a cycle and this is a never ending loop. Then we have Resident Evil 8 Village. <laughs> I'm not really into horror games. I'm not really into horror anything. I've never watched a horror movie. I don't know if I will ever watch one. And I've definitely never played any horror video games. I don't know if I will ever play one. And Resident Evil 8 it looked really cool. Look really nice. Graphically speaking, amazing but not my cup of tea. Then we got Pragmata, which seems to be a post-apocalyptic kind of game where there are cuts, which are holograms. They sold me on cuts. Put a cut in a game and I will be happy. Or put a dog in a video game. But please, 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 let me pet him. Let me pet the cat. So if it's a hologram, I shouldn't keep my hopes up, right? Yeah. Oh, God damn it. And now, for the big reveal. Horizon Zero Dawn. No, 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 sorry. <clears throat> Horizon Forbidden West is coming. We don't know when, but it's coming. Funnily enough, what we got from this new Horizon trailer looked really familiar to me maybe horizon zero dawn was not as interactive as p1 
people would want it to be. You could not climb mountains and all that. And so they took a few examples from Breath of the Wild and applied them to their video game. And it also appears that you're going, you might be able to swim underwater. At least I, I hope we will, because we saw that on the trailer and I would love to be able to do that. We don't have a release date yet, but at least I'm hoping it will come out soon. And then we got the PS5, something that was teased through all the presentation. And of course it was not going to come until the end, but one hour, no, one hour, a one hour wait, that felt like 10 years, my goodness. But we finally got to see it and then the memes started. Because, let me just say that it looks strange. It looks cool, I like it, but it also looks strange. It doesn't look like a console. Ah, uh, don't know what it looks like. And of course we were not given a prize. So I guess that's kind of disappointing. But oh well, that was the end of the presentation. And it's one of the best I've seen in a long time. Kudos to you, Sony. You killed it. What do you guys think? Are you going to buy the PS5? Are you excited? Do you have any favorite games of the ones that were shown in the presentation? If you do, please leave a comment down below telling me all about it. And if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos in the future. I'll see you in the next video.